uh, from O David Nance. Are you on TRT or question mark? All right, this is what everybody wants to know. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another vlog. I hope you guys had an awesome Super Bowl weekend. I definitely did because as you know, I am a Cowboys fan and I hate the 49ers. And so it was so nice to watch the 49ers lose and just troll on the bang bang 49er gang because guys everybody trolls on the us cowboy fans and so we had to take it for those three weeks and so it was really nice and refreshing to give some trolling back and just in case nobody told you that they loved you or they care about you um happy valentine's day it was yesterday so happy belated valentine's day I love you, I care about you, you are more than enough. So I just got done knocking out some cardio and I wanna start tracking my biomarkers more. So um, checked in with my coach last Friday and uh, we wanna get the blood sugar down. So my blood sugar was a little bit elevated but I do think that was because um, I was having a hard time getting sleep all last week. So let me just give you a little bit of a backstory. So when the girls go to bed at about nine o'clock, 10 o'clock sometimes, yes, they do stay up kind of late. Um, that's my time. That's like my free time, right? I can watch YouTube videos. I can watch a Netflix, Prime video, whatever, whatever series I want to watch, play some Xbox, whatever I want to do. That's my time. And I like my, my me time, right? I like me being able to do whatever I want. Sometimes I take it a little bit too far and I go till about two o'clock in the morning. Well, I gotta wake up at you know seven o'clock, get the girls ready for school. And that really messes with my morning schedule. I'm super exhausted, I'm super tired, and guess what? I don't wanna do cardio. And so I'll skip it because I justify it because I stay up way too damn late. And so I really need to get that under control. We have a game plan for that. Uh, we're gonna cut down the me time or the me days until for every other day. Um, but I did get up this morning. I, I mean, I could have stayed up. I could have stayed up late all last night, but I, I reeled it in. I was like, "Hey, Logan, you better go to sleep because you got to do your cardio in the morning." So I cut it a little bit short. And went to bed, got up, and knocked out cardio, no problem. Let's test my blood sugar. All right, here we go. Testing with my bio coach, glucose monitor, guys. Pick yourself up one if you want to see what your numbers are. Okay, 96 is my blood sugar now. Not bad, I still personally would like that in the low 80s, high 70s, um, but again, for people wanting to know where should my blood sugar be, anywhere from 70 to 99 is a good blood sugar range, 70 to 99. Anything that is 100 to 126 is, um, what do they say, that's considered like, you know, pre-diabetes range, if you're typically constantly always in the area, 126 and higher is full-blown diabetes if you are consistently in that range. So if you're consistently in that range, most likely you have insulin resistance and you could be a pre-diabetic or diabetic. So 96, not that bad. Ketones now. And you already know it's ketone strip because the ketone strips are blue and the glucose are white. What will the ketones be? Boom, 0 0.5. All right, so we are in nutritional ketosis, not bad. I'm actually happy about those numbers. Um, I would like my blood sugar to be a little bit lower, but not complaining too bad. Take a picture of this. Anything over 0 0.4 to like 3.0 is a really good optimal range. But I also say this, just because someone has higher ketones than you doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong and it doesn't mean that they are doing something better. Um, that just means that you are using more ketones as energy because now that is my main energy source that I'm using right now. So anyways, guys, let's get home and uh, let's have the first meal of the day. All right, guys, so now that we are back home, we're finally gonna have meal number one. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four eggs. We have seven ounces of chicken breast that I did in the air fryer, and that's gonna be meal one. So after this meal, guys, I'm gonna answer a couple of keto questions. So I put a questionnaire on my Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram, what are you doing? Follow me on Instagram. And so I'm gonna rattle off some questions, do a little Q&A for this YouTube vlog, answer some questions, it should be fun. Question number one, this is a good one. What are the pros and cons of living in Texas? Well, let's start off with the cons and then we'll go with the pros. So cons, 
like living in Texas is that it's so damn big. The state is so huge, and where I live, right, literally right in the middle, uh, Central Texas. So a little bit lower, but right in the middle. It sucks to go on road trips because it takes about a damn day just to get out of Texas. Like I think about all these other states in the, uh, you know, especially on the East Coast, you can literally go through multiple states in a couple of hours. If I'm heading out west, it is damn near gonna take me a full day just to get out of Texas. And so that's one con that I would say, cause I, I love road trips. I love going on road trips. I love traveling. And me and my girls always wanna go on road trips. And you know, they ask me, hey, where should we go? I'm like, well, I'd love to go out west or I'd love to go up north, but it's gonna take like a full day just to get out. So that's one con. Um, another one is that it is really, really hot, especially in the summertime. So around May, sometimes even April, depending on how soon summer comes, it gets really, really hot. And so there's not much to do as far as, like you can't really do anything unless you're gonna be inside or have some type of air conditioning. You're gonna be near a body of water, like go to the lake, go to the river, go to the pool. Fortunately, we have a lot of that where I'm from, so you can easily go to the river. Uh, the San Marcos River is one of the cleanest, clearest, most beautiful rivers to hang out at here in my hometown. So that's like a five minute drive. Or we can go down to our pool, or there is a lake that's like 15, 20 minutes down the road, Canyon Lake. So. The options to do stuff is not the problem. It's just that it's really, really hot. And for people that don't like the heat, you won't be able to cut it. Um, what other thing? I mean, other than that, I, I love Texas. Texas is amazing. It's beautiful. The people are friendly. No state income tax. Um, the economy is booming. Austin's right up the right up the road. San Antonio's right down the road. If I want to take a, a little smaller road trip, we can head up to Dallas, we can head to Houston. Um, yeah, I guess those are the cons when it comes to Texas. Now, the pros, I kind of did hit on the pros. Many jobs, super cheap to live in Texas. Well, I'm not gonna say super cheap, but very affordable. You can easily find a job if you if you're coming here from like the west coast from the east coast you can easily find a job again no state income tax the pay the pay is pretty good here in texas and it's friendly and there's no well okay i can't say there's no crime but from where i'm from in the area that i'm at there is relatively no crime compared to like chicago la houston um new york or dc baltimore area it's super friendly i mean just like super friendly super super safe um now again just like every place here in america or in other countries you gotta avoid some areas right like there's some areas that you just have no business going to don't go to that area don't go to that area at night just use common sense but for the most part you're not going to go to a cvs and see someone in there grabbing whatever they go, smash and grab, that's not gonna happen where I'm from. You're not gonna go to the mall and see all these group of kids run in and smash and grab stuff. That's just not what happens in my area. It's not what happens here and I absolutely love that. So very, very safe for family and your kids and again, very affordable if you want to start a family here. Next one, I wanna know your thoughts on Nature's Own Keto Bread. Maybe do a blood sugar test on it, thanks. It's a great question. Um, yeah, there are many keto bread companies out there. I always joke around this, I say this many times. When I first started keto, there was none of this, okay? You had to make everything by scratch, by hand. There were no keto this, keto that. Now, fast forward to 2024, there is keto everything. So I know that's one thing that a lot of people miss when they start the ketogenic diet is they miss their bread. I get it. Especially if that was something that was your staple when you first started, I can get how you can miss that. Or just having like a sandwich, like right? Like throwing in some turkey, some ham, some bacon, some avocado, some mayo, but you don't want to wrap it up in lettuce. You want some bread. There are definitely some keto friendly bread options. Um, I don't think I've ever tested this one, but I have tested uh, Fox Hill Kitchens, which uh, she's like a local small business owner. I, I would highly recommend you guys go check her out. She's gone to Mito, many keto cons before. I remember her in the very beginning. She's a really nice lady. Fox Hill Kitchens. And then the Sola. 
The Sola bread, I want to say I tested that and I believe it did pass. It's been a while. Um, now they're definitely like a bigger company. They don't use the best ingredients, but it's like, hey, you got to pick and choose your battles, right? So a Sola bread, I believe is actually another good one, but I will do a keto blood test on this nature's own keto um, bread. What's the easiest way to bounce back in ketosis after a cheat meal? It's the day after Valentine's guys. I'm sure you and your wife or your girlfriend or fiance or whatever, probably went to dinner last night, probably ordered a pizza. I saw, you know, all the heart-shaped pizzas that everybody was ordering, and I get it. You gotta live a little bit. I'm a big believer in you gotta live. You gotta, it's all about living in the moments, not the macros. So what's the best way to bounce back? I would say best way, now this is, I would, I'm not gonna say this is extreme and not everybody has to do this. I would say if you don't wanna do this route, just get back to what you were doing before. No need to go extreme. But if you are trying to get in ketosis quick, you really wanna bounce back, I would say do um, probably intermittent fasting. So you just had your cheat meal the night before. I would say don't have a meal until two, three o'clock the following day. I would incorporate some facet cardio when you wake up the next day. 30 minutes on the Stairmaster, 30 minutes on the treadmill incline, um, keeping your heart rate around 120 to 140. Do that for about 30 minutes. I would make sure you're tracking your steps. Aim for 10 to 15,000 steps a day. Yes, that is crazy, right? The next day, following day. Um, making sure you go super, super low carb, like almost no carb, um, because you had your carbs before and incorporate some type of resistance training. I guarantee if you can do those things, you will most likely be in ketosis, depending on what you ate the night before, you will probably be in ketosis that night. Uh, yes, it can happen that fast, especially if you've been doing keto as long as I have. Now, if it's something that you just started, it might take you a day, it might take you a day or two, but it's all about how fast can you burn through those glycogen storages. Um, if you're doing 10,000 steps, a resistance training workout, fasted cardio, super strict keto, it won't take you long. You should get in ketosis pretty quick. And the best way to find out if you're in ketosis or not is to test with your BioCoach blood glucose monitor. Of course, I'm gonna recommend BioCoach because that is my company. Anytime you guys support BioCoach, support my brand, it directly affects my family. You support my family, you support my girl. So of course I'm going to recommend BioCoach. Don't go with anybody else. Stick with us guys because uh, that's my that's my company. So um, yeah, get yourself a BioCoach. Check your ketones, check your blood sugar and find out where you're at. And that's a good way to uh, figure out if you're on the right track or if it's something that you're doing that may be slowing down your progress, slowing down your way to get in ketosis because maybe you're having nature's own keto bread. And let's say I tested and it fails, but you've been having it and you can't figure out why you're in ketosis, why you can't get in ketosis. Probably why, it's because of the bread. All right, so let's continue this questionnaire. Next question, the fasted cardio story that you posted this morning, how long was it? And uh, how long do you recommend? So fasted cardio guys. So. I recommend everybody do at least 30 minutes every single morning. Um, it is not a long time, guys. You can easily, easily find a podcast, a YouTube video. You probably have a Netflix show, something that you can watch, entertain you for 30 minutes. It's really not that long. And again, the fasted cardio, number one and most importantly, it's healthy for you, okay? It's healthy for your heart. It's healthy for your stamina. It's just healthy for overall body. And yes, it does help you lose body fat. It does help in the weight loss process, which is what I'm currently um, doing right now. But regardless, even when I was on my bulking stage, even my coach right now, who is currently bulking, does cardio every single day. I've obviously been coaching with Ross for a very long time, and this is typically what he always does. He starts my cardio sessions off pretty light with 30 minutes a day, and then he'll add more in post-workout. He'll add more in first thing in the morning. So I know it's only gonna go up. So that being said, my recommendation is 30 minutes every single day, preferably first thing in the morning while you're fasting. All right, next one's a fun one. What's my go-to song when I go to the gym? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link. I'll leave. I'll have a link in the description below for my Spotify playlist. Guys, I used to be a rocker, um, 
metal when I'd go to the gym, but I, I just kind of just fell into rap. I don't know, I just love rap music. I don't know what it is. Um, so on my Spotify, it, there's like a list that you can play like my hits or whatever, my, my playlist. And so it give, it give, it changes all the time. So that's what I love about it. I don't have to shuffle it up. Spotify automatically does its own shuffling and piss and it picks like a list of 30 songs that it knows that I like and knows that I listen to all the time. So I always go to my playlist from Spotify and I'll leave that link in the description below, but also it really depends on what's going on in life. Obviously, that's the beauty with music. It's all about emotion. It's all about what you're going through. You know, people always ask me like, yo, Logan, what's your favorite album? What's your favorite Drake album? This and that. And I'll, I'll give them my reasons, but a lot of it has to do with what I'm going through at that time in my life, right? And so that's the beauty with music. So if I'm going through, I don't know, let's just say like a sad, depressing, or I don't know, or maybe I'm feeling like, I feel like going emo back in my high school days and I'm going to go to like 2005 punk rock, right? Or maybe I do, maybe I am pissed off and I'm angry. I'm going to go to my like sixth grade, seventh grade, um, definitely hardcore metal phase of my life and listen to Slipknot and Metallica and Mudvayne. Or maybe I'm just like, you know what, I just want to just uh, hit the new Drake, the new Kanye, whatever, my rap phase. It really all depends, but really, it's going to be my Spotify playlist, and I'll have the link in the description below. Also, go ahead and check it out, do a workout with it, and let me know what you think. All right, so here we go. We're back for another leg day workout. For those of you who, who have been paying attention to what's going on, um, I am finally getting back to my leg day workouts, guys. Um, it's been something that I struggled with through the months of November, December, and January. I pretty much took those three months off because um, I had uh, severe nerve damage and we think I have two more herniated discs. Now, I couldn't get that confirmed because I was going back and forth with uh, and my doctor for getting an MRI scan. And then once I found out how long I had to be in that damn tunnel, that damn coffin, which was like 45 minutes, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think I can do this because I'm super claustrophobic. But moral of the story is I'm finally getting back to my leg day workouts. And I do go light, just high volume, just trying to, you know, to get a good workout in, get a good pump in, not really going heavy like I used to. For those of you who probably remember, Isaiah and I would go super heavy, you know, um, pretty much always trying to max out, which was really stupid, don't do that. Um, but I'm just honestly, I'm just grateful that I'm able to still train legs uh, pain free. Um, yeah, I'm a little sore. Yeah, uh, it, it does kind of bother me that I can't go heavy anymore. And my legs are definitely shrinking. I can see that, especially when old pictures come up. But it's okay. Look, I'm happy. I feel good. I can train. Um, and and that's, you know, that's the most important thing. So you can maybe in this in this video you can see it so if you see my left leg you see how that looks normal but my right leg it's very hard to contract i don't know if you guys can see that it looks the right leg looks smaller but anyways guys this is the leg day workout and uh yeah this is what i did okay back from our workout this is our post workout meal right here this is 85 15 ground beef actually ground turkey with um i don't know about like two scoops of green beans with a lot of salt and this is going to be my post-workout meal guys I'm gonna answer a couple more questions i'm here in my computer room as you can see i mean i can't show you but my girls are underneath there this is my my little screen that i take pictures on fridays uh for my coach to update them and they somehow have made it their clubhouse as you can see the little hands girls put your hands on the little thing Let's see. <laughs> There's one hand right there. Okay, guys. So they're under there. They're hanging out with daddy. Um, post workout meal going in. Let's answer a few more questions. All right, so here we go. Volume or hit for weightlifting? Um, I'm always going to go with volume. I just am a big believer in high volume. My coach trains high volume. It's something that I enjoy doing. Hit is great, but it sucks like it absolutely sucks if you're doing it the right way and you'll know if you're doing it the right way 
if you most likely throw up after your hit session. Um, it's great to incorporate into your overall arsenal, but overall, I'm always gonna be uh, volume. Next question from uh, oh Mike. How are you feeling, man? Thank you for asking. Um, you know, a lot of us guys, especially us males, we always get asked like, hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And we always say the same thing. Oh, I'm good, man, I'm good. But maybe on the inside, you're dealing with a lot. A lot is on your shoulders and I get it. And it's okay to open up. It's okay to express what you're going through, what you're feeling. Um, so to answer this question as of right now, today, uh, I feel good. I feel great compared to where I was mentally um, a couple of months ago, especially in November, November, December were very, very dark and low for me. I was missing my sister. Somehow the holidays must have triggered the loss of my sister. And like, that's as if my sister passed away in October, but she passed away in May, but I didn't have these full effects and these full feelings and this really bad depression and sadness until the holidays, till the holidays came around. Um, so I feel much better. I'm in a much better place mentally, spiritually, physically, I'm back to working out, I'm back to training my lower body as you guys saw in the video. Um, so thank you for asking and fellows, this is just another reminder and to women as well. It's okay to let people know you're not okay, especially if they ask you. It's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to have issues. You know, you don't have to always bottle it in like I did for years and years. It's okay to express how you're feeling and Mike, thank you for asking, I feel much better, man. Thank you. Does keto cause high cholesterol? Now, I'm going to tell you, you should type in right after this video, uh, type in Dr. Ken Berry keto and high cholesterol. He truly breaks it down. And for people who don't want to go look up a video and you know take another 15, 20 minutes out of your day, I'll give you the short and simple answer, no. All right, we got a little juicy question right here uh, from old David Nance. Are you on TRT or question mark. All right, this is what everybody wants to know. This is what I always would get asked, uh, especially three, four years ago. So yes, I am currently taking testosterone replacement therapy. I'm on 150 mg every single week, and that's my dosage. And yeah, I jumped on testosterone replacement therapy back in... I wanna say the beginning of 2019, the end of 2018, I got my levels tested and I was slightly below average. And for me being a bodybuilder, for me being someone who wants to feel at peak range, I was like, nope, I don't wanna be below average. That's not what I want. I wanna be in the high range. I wanna be above, uh, above average. It is the best decision I have ever made. And look, whether you agree or disagree, um, Anybody who asks me what's my opinion on it, I highly recommend uh, taking it. I feel much younger, I have much more energy, I feel like I'm 18 again, guys, if you know what I mean. And yeah, I just highly recommend, uh, if you're feeling like, if you're feeling lethargic, if you're feeling low energy, if you just feel like crap and you've done all the things first, like change up your eating, started working out, and you still kind of just feel like, man, I'm just, I'm 35 plus years and I just feel, you know, just not the same how I used to be, then absolutely uh, jump on testosterone replacement therapy and see how it feels. Look, I'm a big believer in it. I recommend it. Um, it's did wonders for me. So speaking on my personal experience, it's the best decision I've ever made. And now, uh, because back then when I started, there wasn't peptides. So if you're someone who's like, look, I, I really don't want to do testosterone replacement therapy, I would like to maybe start off with peptides. Start off there. It's a much smaller needle. It's like it's like an insulin pin. It's like you don't even feel it. It's almost, it's almost a little, it's like one step above taking your, your blood glucose or your ketone readings, right? And that is something that has worked wonders for a lot of people. I've taken a couple of peptides uh, for like pre-workout, weight loss, um, but you know, there are a lot of people who believe in them and I believe in them as well, but look, testosterone replacement therapy is perfect for me. That is, that is all that I am on. I am taking nothing else. Now, when I was competing for a show, obviously guys, I was taking a bodybuilding cycle, which is a bunch of other things, but that's for like a short 10 to eight week period. That's not something that I would do every single day or all year round. So, um, yeah, I know a lot of people always ask me about that. Are you natty? Are you not? I mean, I feel like it's kind of died down on my channel because I've addressed it many times. If anybody asks me what my opinion and experience is on it, I always tell them, dude, absolutely best decision I've ever made. I love it and I will never go back. So that's, uh, 
That's my thoughts, that's my answer, but let me know what you think. Guys, fellas, uh, are you over the age of like, you know, 30, 35, you're feeling a little lethargic, a little weak, a little just not yourself anymore? Uh, let me know if you have been thinking about it, and if you have any questions you wanna ask me, let me know.